Nation. We're here with Derek Robinson, senior men's uh, track athlete out of Jenks, Oklahoma. Um, appreciate everyone being very patient with me. I haven't been on uh, the video for like about a month or so, so we're getting back into it. Uh, 2018 resolution, do more videos. So starting with Derek here. Um, appreciate you coming in for a little bit. I know you said you're really busy, and I know the weather out there is frightful right now with all the sleet, <laughs> but appreciate you uh, making the trip over. So how's your day going first off? It's good, like I said, it, <laughs> it's busy, busy <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad to be here. Ready to roll. All right, yeah. cool. Well, he has picked out his Statesman 16. He's ready to, uh, to go in a little bit on this, but first off, we're going to talk, talk track. Um, you guys have a meet under your belt, um, your senior year, so obviously you know, a lot of uh, expectations I'm sure you set for yourself, et cetera, goals, but right out the gate, uh, qualified for nationals in the weight throw. Um, talk about that first meet, and uh, then we can talk a little bit more about the season. Well, um, the fir the first meet was uh, it was it was shocking. I yeah. I didn't expect I expected to qualify in weight. Yeah. But I didn't expect to do it as easily as I did. Yeah. I I did it pretty easily, and I was very consistent with it. But I was actually very shocked at how well I threw how well I threw the shot put. Right. Okay. I'm. I'm actually very close to qualifying in shot put, and that was not a goal right. that I had at, at all. So there you go, there you go. Um, with uh, being an understudy, as we'll call it, to uh, to Derek Seddon over the last few years, um, you know, national champion. I know discus isn't isn't your event like it is his, but you guys, you know, would do all the same same thing. So I guess um, first. First off, talk about, I guess, what you possibly learned from him and, you know, what it's like now to be really the big dog now in the, in the throwing area. Um, well, just to, just to give a little recap of last year, just one of the inside jokes of, of being a thrower at William Penn was I was the, I was the A standard <laughs> and he was the triple A standard right. <laughs> because he... He qualified A standard in three events, yeah. and I happened to qualify in there were ones. in one. So that has been that has been the story so far of right. my track career. But it's it was fun throwing with Derek because I never had any pressure. Yeah. As as an athlete here, I never I never had to go into a meet thinking, okay, I have to win this. I always right. always went into a meet thinking, okay, I gotta score some points and right. maybe get close to Derek. That, right. That was it. So. Um, this year, it, I, I was assuming it was going to be very stressful, mm -hmm. um, obviously, because I don't have someone to hide. I don't have someone to hide under. Derek said it was very, very easy to hide under. Yeah, sure. Um, but this year, especially that first meet, I didn't have anybody to hide under. And I actually wasn't as stressed as I thought it was yeah. going to be. So Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, when you're now, like I said, top dog, everybody's expecting the biggest things out of you. Not to say that... You know there aren't other people that could that could step up and take some of that uh, that you know load off your back, but in the end you're the senior thrower and you've been to national, so yeah, there's going to be some expectations. Um, I guess have you had some conversations with Coach Friesen on that end and saying, you know, has he has he helped you with that or has it been kind of you're kind of figuring out as you're going here? Uh, it 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 has been more of just a uh, an assumed role, right? as less of a communication thing. I I knew going into this that I would be the guy and I knew um last year with Derek here I was still kind of I was a I was a a sub leader yeah. sort yeah. of yeah. Yeah. Of definitely upperclassman so yeah sure. I've I've been it's been just an easy transition. Friesen really hasn't had to say anything. I've kind of just uh, taken on that role. Right. Um I mean you guys are all individually you're not, you know, you can't it's not like you're adding your throw on top of somebody else's throw on top of somebody else's throw to get this team score type thing. How is uh, you know being a leader in, I mean, you've also played football here, and being a leader in track different than being a leader in another sport? <laughs> totally different, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different mindset. You, you, have to be, you have to be outspoken. Right. You have to be encouraging. You have to talk to your other athletes. Whereas in football or other other team sports of that caliber, you you can perform and you can do well, but it's it's more it's more of a uh, encouraging others and telling others like hey do this hey like maybe a technique thing like it's it's more of like a helping coach and helping see what 
you see in an individual sport right. versus like in, in a team sport, you just, you just do it and you can do it and people just follow you because you're doing something. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And obviously there is that component too of being a leader just by action, but mm -hmm. so much more on, on the a verbal side of it as well. Um, you guys, you to take that big long break off. I mean, you guys competed about a month ago, um, back into action next weekend, correct? Uh, this week. This week. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm getting my, my dates all mixed up, but what's that like, you know, taking with any sport, you guys have that in a month long break there normally, but, um, I feel like you're ready. You didn't, you didn't waste that last month. You're <laughs> continuing to roll. You set the right example, right, Derek? <laughs> um, it, I, it's, I lifted, I, yeah. I worked out, I, I spent time over break, but it's hard with, with track or at least with throwing because yeah, you, you can't need just the facilities, yeah, you, you need the implements. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so I, we've all taken a month off and yeah. this week has been, has been a little rough with practice. We're not, um, obviously we're still kind of throwing as well as yeah. we were, but it's, it's not up to, we, we were doing really yeah. well before that first meet. Yeah. So um, yeah. Sure, not as sharp, but you know, there's, but you've shown that you can do it. It's probably just a muscle memory thing. You yeah. gotta get a week or so under your belt again. You know, you guys will be ready to go. So, all right, well, best of luck. Um, you guys are at uh, Dubuque this weekend. Yes. Okay, Dubuque, uh, the Sal Butler um, Open. Uh, so, if you guys are anybody's up there, check out Derek and the, um, the guys and ladies as they compete there. Um, it's that. It's, indoor season is just a, a snap of the sure. finger and just you know it's over just like that so best of luck in the next few weeks getting ready for nationals uh, etc um fortunately you guys don't have a very long trip for nationals they can just go down to no, Pittsburgh nice. Kansas so a really real quick little trip and um should be fairly close for families so maybe yeah. the family can come up too and watch us so best of luck as the season progresses and we're gonna get into the fun 16 here now with them so Derek, you're ready to go, I'm sure. Uh, right out the gate, what's Derek Robinson's nickname? Well, this is an interesting question because I've had several nicknames, so I will just give two. Okay. Um, my, one of my nicknames in high school was Tex okay. because I went to Jeeks, Oklahoma, but I moved there from Texas in high school, gotcha. and one of my coaches called me Tex. And it got so um, known that I ended up starting turning in papers with the name Tex. Oh, really? I was being called Tex. And I think even at my graduation, and it was a big school, there was like 650 people right. in the class, yeah. they said, like, Derek Tex Robinson That's because funny. it was that relevant. <laughs> I've seen your Twitter handle, and I knew it was, uh, I think it's Big Tex big yeah. 50 or something like that. So I saw the text, and I was like, I don't really understand that because, <laughs> yeah, he's from Oklahoma. And, you know, there's, there's absolutely no rivalry between Oklahoma and Texas. So I wonder how that one would have worked out, but... Very cool. Um, all right, coming up from Oklahoma, we obviously William Penn is very diverse. We've got kids from all over the place, but why did you choose to leave the state to come up to William Penn? Well, I think I think the town is good. That was a joke. I, yeah, that was a complete <laughs> I like, joke. I don't, no, no, I don't no, know where you're going no, with that. No. <laughs> um, I chose I chose William Penn uh, not to get too religious, so I'm um, not to get offensive at all. I, I chose William Penn because I really felt like um, my God called me yeah. here. Yeah. I, I came on a visit, um, I prayed about it, and I really felt like God was calling me here. Which is an interesting story in itself because um, this William Penn doesn't have a Bible degree. It right. doesn't have like a specific pastoral degree. Right. But and I had offers to go somewhere else yeah, to a more a biblical, uh, a biblical a yeah, bi seminary like school a Bible, or something, yeah, like, something that, right? like that. Yeah, sure. But I really felt like God called me here, and that's. Well, that's there you good. go. Good job heeding His advice. <laughs> we we appreciate that and how the, how this has worked out the last few years. All right. Um, what's your favorite restaurant? Okay, so there's this restaurant called Raising Canes. Oh, I've heard okay. of it. Yeah, actually. and it is a chicken. I just received a text today. It's coming from to my wife. It is coming to Des Moines. I know. Guys, I saw, I saw it this, yesterday. this is a big deal. This is, <laughs> this is, I, I have dreamed about having a Raising Cane's in this area. Like, I grew up in Tulsa. We had a Raising Cane's. Right. I, it's good. It's, it, it's, it must it's be. Good. Somebody posted about it yesterday, I read, and they said, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. And I was like, I feel like I may have heard of it, but <laughs> either way, I, I'm hoping it opens soon. Oh, I don't yeah. know, I guess, what your future holds for being <laughs> in Iowa in this area, but... 
Um, hopefully it opens before you leave Oskaloosa. So either way, um, we're excited. Raising Canes, West Des Moines. Um, so either way. Um, all right, if you were not playing uh, or not doing uh, track and field, you know, throwing and everything, you've obviously also done football. What other sport outside of those two? I'm not going to let you have uh, football <laughs> either, but what other sport would you like to play? I, this is, this is a different sport. This is probably a different answer. I would love to be in like an e-sports okay. category. So doing, doing some kind of online competitive sporting event. It's growing. Uh, and it's growing big time. Yeah, Crazy it is growing. Big time. I would love to be an esports guy. We, there's been a lot of talk on campus about that, about possibly adding that would be after your your time here, but <laughs> it, it could happen. And um, fortunately, selfishly, it's not going to be housed under athletics, so I don't, I don't have to worry about trying to find a, a way to write a release on somebody winning Call of Duty. So uh, uh, however that works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Hey, you're a millennial, I get that, you, you want to play games, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, what's some advice you'd give to a junior high, high school athlete preparing to, wanting to go to, to college? What do they need, what, what do they need to know? I, I would advise, and I've actually advised some people that I know that are that age, I would advise them if they want to play a sport, they need to start contacting their coaches immediately start contacting uh, the sc schools that they want to go. I right. would say go to the schools, visit them, email, send emails, make phone calls, do all the work because yeah. it's, it's all in your hands. And you can yeah. get, you can get some, some offers from some schools that you wouldn't think you would get if yeah. you just take the initiative. Yeah, so that's what I would say. Be proactive, right? For sure. All right, um, when you have spare time, because it sounds like uh, you don't, <laughs> but if you ever do have spare time, uh, what do you like to do? I love just like playing video games with my wife. Uh, I'm married and um, she's a millennial as well. Uh, we recently actually just got into uh, playing video games together and it's just been, it's been a roller coaster. It has been fun. Well, it is yeah. fun, fun playing games with, and with, with, with your best friend, right? Yeah. That's why, yeah. I, to my, my wife, Jody, ever watches this. We don't play video games together, but I love doing things with you. It's a lot more fun doing it with someone that you actually enjoy hanging around with. So I totally get what you're saying. Is that you know, uh, ton of fun playing games, whatever it may be, doing something. Yeah. All right. Um, what's been your biggest challenge so far in life? In in whatever, however you want to answer that, life and um, in sports, whatever. You know, I've I had a. Uh, I had an autistic brother. I have an autistic brother. He's young. He's a uh, or he's younger than me. He's he's twenty or he's nineteen now. He's turning twenty uh, soon, <clears throat> and it's it didn't really hit me until I was I was in high school. The challenge that it brings, um, I kind of you know you you kind of have to grow up a little bit right. very soon, and I had to learn how to kind of act as a as another parent as forward like mentoring him because he's a nonverbal he can't talk he can't uh, communicate and he can't <clears throat> function on his own mm -hmm. uh, well at all so I think just having having my little brother uh, in that situation really really grew me and really that's been a big challenge that I've, and I'm still still processing still learning how to overcome that and uh, learning for the future you know I, th I think I can be a good father because I've I've been able to act as a kind of a parent in that situation right. and just being able to see that take place. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, two-part question. <clears throat> how would you describe yourself and how would your friends describe you? Oh, man. Um, I, would, I would describe myself as, like, very passionate, um, almost to a fault. Just a short story, me and Madison, my wife, have been playing video games, mm -hmm. and when I first started playing video games with her, I would get frustrated, <laughs> because like she's she she wasn't as good, and she wasn't keeping up, and like right. I said, I'm passionate with everything I do, yeah. and so we would be <clears> losing, <throat> and it would be like, because she was still learning the system, and I would yeah. just like get mad, and I had to take a step back and realize, okay, this I can't take this passion into this, because right. <laughs> this is just about having fun yeah. with my wife. Right. I'm very passionate. Um, but my, my friends, people that know me would probably call me, describe me as just ridiculous. <laughs> I am, I am absolutely ridiculous. I make some weird noises. Um, it, and, 
in room groups of people that I don't know, I tend to just like make some kind of face, make some kind of weird noise that just makes people go, "What is wrong with you?" And I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm just me. I'm Tex. <laughs> what can I tell you? <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the most played song or maybe um, genre or artist? Again, I'll let you answer however you want to. But what's the most played music that you're listening to right now? Um, I I work at a church in town, mm -hmm. and um, part of part of what I do there is I, I do some worship, I do some music for the church, right. and part of doing music is learning uh, newer recent songs mm -hmm. that are coming out in the in the Christian world and right. the, in our in our place, and so I will typically have like a uh, like a Christian radio station on my I'm on my iTunes that I'm mm -hmm. like regularly listening to and listening for new songs that I haven't heard so that I can um, lead worship music time at my sure. church with it. So Cool. Pretty cool. Um, all right, three-part question. What's your favorite? So you only marked one. I can, I can see that now. <laughs> now I get it. You're trying to sneak one past me. Uh, three-part question, though. you got to answer them all three. What's your favorite time of day? What's your favorite day of the week? What's your favorite month of the year? My favorite time of day is definitely 6 p.m. on the spot. Um, Around that time, I am either, there's, there's like two things that are happening. I'm either at home with my wife, eating food. Right. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> or I am at my church preparing to do our weekly youth service. Um, and those are just two, two uh, uh, three things, I guess, food, wife, and uh, youth group that just really... You're very passionate about I right? love it. Very yeah. Passionate. All right, um, day of the week, favorite day of the week. Day of the week. Um, you know, it, it was Saturday, but during track season, Saturday is a little uh, stressed. So right, right. I would say probably Wednesday, just because Wednesday is when um, we actually do youth group, Wednesday right. night. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's easy. Wednesday, right. Wednesday for sure. Definitely. And then month of the year, or time of the year, I guess you want to go with that. Oh, time. Hmm. Season, whatever, how do you want to Huh, I, <laughs> it just depends on where I'm at. In yeah. Iowa, I, I like summer, and I don't like winter, but in like... Yeah, well, you're from Oklahoma, I get that. In you Oklahoma, that it's warmer, so yeah. I like winter. Sure. Like, I don't know, it's just something about season, something about the uh, bitter cold and the... You like, you like warmer weather. Yeah. And you can be honest, you're, you're from, you're from the... <laughs> South of the Mason Dixon line, you can admit that you like warm weather. It's okay. <laughs> Nobody will hold it against you. All right. Um, if you could learn to do anything that you can't currently do, which I'm guessing you can do a ton of stuff, but it's something you can't currently do, what, what do you want to learn? Oh, man. I, I would love to learn how to play violin. I, but that is so, so above me. Like, I'm, I'm a music major. I study music, but, like... Uh, that's in different things. I, I sing and I play guitar and right. I play piano. But I would, if I had the time, if I had like a year of just not working and not doing anything, violin would be awesome. So I mean, obviously, guitar and violin are not the same thing. But you got some strings, and you got some wood woodwind <laughs> instrument ish. How different could it be, really? Uh, no, I, I, that's coming from a person that can't even. <laughs> blow and make a tool work, so yeah, I, I can't say anything. All right, um, who's been the most influential person in your life? Um, um, you know, I I grew up in, in the church, and I obviously my dad would have been a definite one, but I don't want to give the typical dad answer. Right. Um, I would say my mentor and my first official uh, church boss was Cody Brumley and he's a he's a youth he was a youth pastor at the time now he's an associate pastor at a church in Tulsa in Jinx where I grew up and um, just the kind of influence he had I I asked him if he could marry me and my wife and that's the that's the kind of influence that he's yeah. had I've, I I try to replicate him obviously as a Christian I try to replicate Jesus but um, from an earthly person I think that's that's the guy that I really try to replicate very cool all right. Uh, do you have any pets? <laughs> uh, no, but I I wanted you to ask that because my wife loves pets, right. and um, we will have a dog one day. Right. One day we will have yeah. a dog. 
we just don't yet. I just I had to throw that in there because she loves. Well, that would have been the second dogs. part of it. Like, well, even if you don't have them, do you want them? Yeah. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> yeah. So I'm guessing she spends a lot of time at the animal shelter. She was she, like, she like she's, walks the dog. She's been there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough place to go to if uh, you can't have one. <laughs> like, I can walk the dog and then I gotta leave and they they're moping. All right, uh, two part question. What's one activity that absolutely terrifies you, and how much money would it take for you to oh actually do it? Um, dude, I could not bungee jump. I I would never be able to bungee jump. I'm sorry. I can't. I can barely go on a ladder, yeah. which is really bad for my manhood because there's a lot of things <laughs> I, that I need I'm, to get I'm, in I'm, high places. I'm with that. But oh man, I. I'm terrifies gonna, even talking about it, doesn't it? I know. I I understand. I, I'm in the same boat. I wouldn't do it. But I mean, if you're offering money, you know, I, I, I gotta pay bills somehow. Right, right. right. I get. I would do it for a hundred. I don't think I'd go less than a hundred. I think hundred grand. No, I, I would do it for a hundred. Hundred dollars? Yeah, I've. I would face that. That can't fear. terrify you that much. It then, if you're, it if you're no, willing to do no it for a hundred dollars. There's no way. But I'm saying everybody's got to pay your bills, but a hundred dollars, you got to put that bar a little higher. All of a sudden, people are going to be coming up to you and be like, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars right go now. Jump. Go money no. jump. Guaranteed. Somebody <laughs> watch this. Give Pony up a bunch of money and make Derek do it because he just said he'll do it for a hundred dollars. You set the bar way too low, my man. <laughs> All right, last but not least, and I don't think you want to be a professional athlete. I think you have uh, loftier, loftier goals. I'm not saying that's not a lofty goal, but I think you have different goals in mind in your life, but if money were no object and you couldn't be a professional athlete, what would your dream job be? You know, if money if money were no object, I, I'm going to hate this answer and I'm going to look back at it, but honestly, the job I have, I'm the youth pastor of the College Avenue Friends Church here in Oskaloosa. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm, it, 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 for for being a college student, obviously it's it's money for me and it helps. But um, like from a money standpoint, I wouldn't be able to do it my whole life. Yeah. But I just but, if, but we're talking money's no object. It, so yeah, if money's no if object, can, it, I am doing my dream job, and um, cool. I I love it. I love it so much. I love my kids. I love my students. I love that church, and I just I love it, man. Yeah, I, I've been. Awesome. I've been wanting to be a youth pastor since I was like 12 years old, and over the summer I was offered the job, and was, there was no yeah. there was no holding back at that right. point. So very cool, awesome. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. You gave some dynamite answers here. This is uh, definitely one of one of my favorite things to do in my job. Unfortunately, I haven't done it much lately, but. Um, you gave one of the best interviews I've ever had, wow. so I appreciate that. I, I enjoyed the last uh, 23 minutes, and it, oh, it blew so right sorry. past. No, oh, I love no. it, because I'm like, that's great. Oh. There was there was so much good stuff here. So, anyway, uh, Derek Robinson, appreciate you coming in. Uh, best of luck this weekend, weekends to come, um, as you guys are uh, getting ready for nationals, etc. But, uh, yeah, best of luck, and we'll keep track of you on statesmanathletics.com. All right, thanks so much.